There are a bunch of different ways to customize VS Code's UI to be productive as a developer. And in this video, I'm gonna show you several, some of which you may be familiar with, but then others, not so much, even if you're a seasoned developer. So let me know in the comments which one were a surprise to you. Let's take a look. Before we jump into our video, I want to go ahead and tell you that we have a brand new LinkedIn page for VS Code. So go ahead and follow us there for some original articles for content that you won't find on YouTube and then some additional insights on our video. And now back to our scheduled program. I've always wanted to say that. Before we get started with customizing the UI of VS Code, I just want to do a quick refresher of its anatomy. On the far left hand side, we have the activity bar, which lets you switch between views and gives you additional context specific indicators like the number of outgoing changes when Git is enabled. To the right of that, we have the primary sidebar, which contains views like the Explorer to assist you while working on your project. Now in the center here, we have what's referred to as the editor group, which is really just your main editor area to modify your files. And you can open as many editors as you want side by side, vertically or horizontally. Right below, we have an additional space that's referred to as the panel. And by default, it contains output, debug information, errors and warnings, and an integrated terminal. And below that, we have our status bar, which provides information about the open project and the files that you edit. Now with that out the way, let's talk customization. Now the first topic that I'd like to talk about, which is probably the most common way that people consider customizing VS Code is by implementing themes. And one of the first things that developers think of is to install a theme through the marketplace. And you can do that by typing in theme and see what comes up. Or if you know a name of a particular theme, then you could choose that and then install it. However, another common approach, which is honestly like my preference, is to actually go to the command palette. And if you type in theme, you can choose the options for preferences, color theme. And what I like about this is before even installing anything, you can just scroll up and down to choose whatever you think you like immediately. Visually, it's right there in front of your face. Now there is a limited amount of themes that get shown here. However, if you scroll up at the very top, you'll notice that there is an option for browse additional themes. You get a lot more options. Just scroll down and up, or just go to the right here and through the scroll bar, quickly sift through all the different themes and test them out. Now, once you choose one, like material theme is what I just chose here, then I'll ask you to install that extension. And if I click OK, you can see on the left hand side, material theme extension showed up. And if I click on it, it was clearly installed. And when I want to uninstall it, I can just come over here to uninstall it. Now, the next thing that I want to show is how we can customize the activity bar here on the far left. Several of these icons, for any reason that you feel like it's a little too crowded, you can hide any of them. Like, let's say you didn't want to see uh, GitHub pull requests. You can come here and just hide that. Also, in terms of organization, if there's something that you want to see closer to the top, like let's say Copilot chat, you can click on it and then just drag it up closer to the top. Now, when you're working with a project file, you'll probably have like your view open here with the primary sidebar. And I wanna show you that the activity bar itself could be placed either on the top or the bottom of the sidebar. So for example, if we come over here and right click, you can go to activity bar position and choose top or bottom or hidden. So obviously if we choose hidden, it's just not gonna be there, but let's say we choose top. It looks like it actually went hidden, but it's not. It's right over here at the top of our project file which is kind of cool if you're a minimalist and you just don't need it taking up extra space. So you can come here and do your search or click on chat and run your commands as you normally would. But I like mine's typically on the left hand side. So I'm just going to go ahead and right click somewhere where there's a space between the icon so I can get that context menu to move the position back to its default. Now you might be wondering whether or not you can move this activity bar to the right hand side 
And by clicking on the context menu and checking the positions, you don't really see an option for the right hand side, but you actually could, but you have to do that by telling the primary sidebar to go to the right, which I can do right here. Or if I can collapse my project files here, right click, I still have the option to move primary sidebar to the right and it hops on over and there it is along with the activity bar. Now I'm used to it being on the left hand side. So I'm going to move the primary sidebar back to the left and then go ahead and demonstrate these same maneuvers can be applied to your panel at the bottom. If I come here and click on the menu bar of the panel, there's an option to move it to the top, left, right, or bottom. If I move it to the right, I can execute my terminal commands from here. But personally, I don't really like that look. So I'm going to move it towards the bottom. One more thing before moving on I want to show you is that the same way that earlier on I mentioned we could organize the icons here in the activity bar, you can do the same organizing the different tabs in the panel. So if I wanted to put terminal up front, I could just grab and drag it to drop it over here. And the same applies to the sidebar here too. Just drag what you want to move to the position you want and drop it. Now let's talk about the main editor section. Let's open up a couple of files here. In the controllers folder, I have a home controller file and a product controller. Now, if you look to the far right here, you'll see that there's a section here with tiny little code, which is referred to as a mini map. And you'll notice that when you scroll down your code, you're not noticing any change there in the mini map. But if you actually hover over the mini map, it's going to highlight the area of the code that you're in. And if you click on it, you could actually just quickly navigate to specific sections of your code. Now, I don't really use this that much and I'm a minimalist, so I usually get rid of it. And to get rid of it, you could just simply right click on it and uncheck Minimap. And if you want to bring it back, you can go to View, Appearance, and there's an option for Minimap right over here. Now in your main section here, sometimes there's several parts of your code that you want to look at at once. So it's nice to have several views of the same file. So for example, what you can do is split the page that you're looking at to either above, below, or to the left or to the right. So for example, if I went ahead and chose below here, I have views of the same page, but then I can just navigate and go down to a portion that I want to keep an eye on. Let's say if I wanted to just look at this method here while I make changes at the top part of the products controller page. If I wanted to add more views, I can come down to this bottom part of the page right here and split that to the right. And now I have three views. But for now, let's get rid of these two and shift our focus to the status bar. Now, just like the sidebar and the activity bar in VS Code, the status bar can also be customized. So for example, if we were to right click on the activity bar here, you'll see all the different options of items that you can hide or show. At the far left corner here, this blue section, that is for the remote host. So if I were to uncheck that, then it won't show. Same thing for our awesome icon for copilot status. I can easily hide that by unchecking copilot status. And also I could just hide the status bar itself. And if I do want to bring the status bar back, I can just go to the menu bar and click view, appearance, status bar, and bring back the items that I previously hid. One last portion that I want to show you about the status bar is that you could actually customize the color. So if you wanted to do that, you can go to the user settings and you could add this to the configuration, workbench.color customizations and modify the background and foreground. And there's so much within VS Code that you could customize. And what's really cool is that even if you don't know the exact color code to put, you could just click on this icon here and just change the color to what you feel that you want to modify it to. And look at that, the status bar has been updated. Pretty cool, but I'm going to leave it to its original state for now. So now let's talk about font size. Oftentimes, if you want to increase the size of the font visually in VS Code, you might default to hitting Command plus to increase or to decrease Command minus. 
If you're on Windows, it would be Control. But what you'll notice is that even though the font's increasing, it's, it's the whole screen, really. So the activity bar and status bars are also being affected. And if you want the activity and the status bar to stay the same, what you can do is hit Command, Comma to bring up settings option here and type in font size. And just so that we could see the effects of the change, let me go ahead and just grab home controller and just bring it to the left pane here. Right now, you can see it's currently 17, but if I wanted to change that to 27, now that increased the font, but the activity and status bar stays the same. Now I'll switch it back. The same applies also to the terminal. Like my terminal is pretty visible right now, but let's say I wanted the size to be a little bit smaller. I could search for font terminal. And right over here, we could see it's at a size 20. I could change that to 10. And now my terminal font is a lot smaller, which is useful if I'm going to be displaying a lot of code there. But again, I'm gonna switch it back to where I had it. So let's say you've made a bunch of custom UI changes to VS Code, and then you wanna make several more changes, but then go back. This is where profiles come into play because it allows you to create several profiles that have unique configurations. If we go to the gear icon and select profiles, you can see that there's one here that's already called default, but I could create a new one that will be different. Just for the sake, so we could easily see the difference, I'm gonna go ahead and change our theme for the default to have a unique color. Let's choose Abyss. And so we know when it's this color, we're in our default. Now let me create a new profile called Experimental. Now we have a few options here. I can choose a unique icon so I could easily see that I'm in a different profile. I'll choose a diamond. And Copy From allows me to choose from templates. I can choose a profile that's specifically for Angular or one for Java Spring, Node.js, etc. For simplicity's sake, I'm gonna choose none and I'll go ahead and choose create. So now if I close out the tab here and I go to the command palette, I can type in switch and select switch profile and go to the new one that I just created now you'll see that the whole UI is completely different. It doesn't have any of the extensions that I had before. What we're looking at are popular extensions, but if I look for under install, there's nothing because it's a blank profile. Now, had I chosen a template profile for Angular or Python, all relevant extensions for either one would be installed automatically. And so I can come here, make whatever changes that I want. And what's also nice is once I'm satisfied with my new profile, I can click on the diamond, go to profiles, and right over here, I have the option to export. If you wanna see how to export, among other profile features, check out this video here. And if for any reason you have more questions about profiles that's not answered in that video or this one, you can always come to Copilot Chat and specifically use the at VS Code participant and ask it a question or give a declarative statement like explain to me how profiles work and it will do so. And of course, you could ask it any question regarding VS Code and it will give you a detailed answer. So that's it. Hope you got some value out of this video. And if you did, please hit the like and subscribe. We actually were just scratching the surface. So if you wanna dig into more, into some other ways to customize VS Code's UI, check out this documentation right here. And also take a look at some of these other videos that we have here.